Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. It's great to be back from a much needed vacation. I'm relaxed, rejuvenated, and ready to continue sharing some great Reaper tips and tricks for the masses. During my time off, I was finally able to get those ceiling panels installed. If you'd like to learn more about making your own acoustic treatment panels, click the link above. And if you're not already a member of our Discord community, I encourage you to click the link in the description. We have plenty of active Reaper users who are ready and willing to assist you. Now, on with today's video. Unless you've been living under a rock, and if you do happen to live under a rock, no offense intended, surely you've heard of Re-EQ. Not the Rhea EQ that comes stock with Reaper. Not sure why people keep calling it Rhea EQ. I mean, the software is not pronounced Reaper, it's Reaper, so it's probably just Re-EQ. Didn't Justin give an official ruling on pronunciation at some point? Anyways, there's another EQ with a similar name, Re-EQ, spelled R-E-E-Q. For the sake of acknowledgement, from this point forward, if I say Re-EQ, I mean the one that we're talking about in today's video. Re-EQ is a community-created JSFX plugin. It's known by many as the Working Man's Pro Q3. Now, I've never personally used any FabFilter plugins. I hear they're fantastic, but depending on your financial situation, they can be a bit pricey. Re-EQ not only looks similar to Pro Q3, but it also has a similar set of features. One major difference, other than the amount of bands that are available, is the price. Re-EQ is available for free through Repack. I'll leave a link for both the Repack repository and the forum post in the description. And if you're not familiar with Repack and how to use it, check the link above. Let's take a look. The project I've got open is my own cover of War All The Time by Thursday. Now when I say my own cover, I have to be fair, I did have some co-conspirators. I'd like to give a shout out to Adam Granatella of Hi YouTube I'm Dad for his work on the bass, and Shane Smothers for his work on the guitar. We started on this back in early 2022, but somebody is dragging his feet on getting those vocals done. Hopefully I'll get those done soon. Back to the video. Let's take a listen to work in progress on this. I'll play a little bit of a verse into an interlude and a chorus, and then let's go back and take a look at how I've used re-EQ in this project. absolutely love that song. It's one of my favorites. Let's start by taking a look at the instance of re-EQ on my master track. I'll briefly discuss some of the features of re-EQ, and then we'll take a look at how I've used it in this project. As I said in the introduction, you'll notice that re-EQ looks very similar to Pro-Q3. I can see the different bands that I've used in this project, along with the control panel at the bottom. Up at the top, I have the option to set the scale of the EQ. As I right-click on any of the frequencies that I've currently got used, I have a menu that pops up. I have an option to invert the gain, set the gain back to zero. I can choose the shape, and there's several to pick from. And one thing that I definitely like with this as compared to the stock EQ in Reaper is I have stereo placement options for stereo, mid, side, left, or right. So I can mix and match bands and stereo placement all in the same interface. Down below, we also have options to split, duplicate, and delete. Most of these features are self-explanatory and available in several other EQs. However, it's not very often you see all of these features in the same package. One feature that I definitely enjoy in re-EQ is the option to solo a band. If I select one of my bands and hold shift, it solos that frequency. I'll play back through a section of the music and solo the bands so you can hear what's being done on the master track. Up first, I've got a low cut at about 30 hertz. Now we can tell in the panel below that this is a Butterworth style low cut, and I'm operating on the stereo field. If you don't have a sub, you likely won't be able to hear this, but I'll play a quick section and then solo that band. As I said, it's very difficult to hear that, but this cut is taking out a bit of muddiness in the low end. 
One feature that I failed to mention earlier in the right-click menu is the slope. The slope adjustment allows me to change how steep a cut is. In this case, I've got it set to 18 decibels per octave, and if I were to change from 18 to 24, watch the steepness of the slope change. In general terms, there's not really a right or wrong slope. It's greatly program dependent. I will say in my own experience, the more steep the slope, the less natural the cut sounds. Let's take that back to minus 18. I can do that either by right-clicking the node, or I can click down in the control panel below and switch back. Up next, I've got a low cut at about 96 hertz. This is operating in side mode, as indicated here in the control panel, or in the right-click menu and stereo placement. Once again, I'll play a portion of the music and then I'll solo this frequency so we can hear what it's doing. Again, my primary function in the use of this EQ curve was to help clear out some mud and take a little bit of the low end out of the guitars to make more room for the bass. Up next, I've got a cut at about 325 hertz. This is operating on the side, as we can see down here in the panel, as well as in the right-click menu. And let's take a listen. I'll move straight up to the chorus so we can have a little bit more instrumentation to work with. We'll take a listen and then we'll solo that band and see what it's doing. And once again, that appears to be taking out some of the muddiness and a little bit of low end out of the guitars. Up next, we've got a cut at about 3K, and this is operating on the mids in the stereo field. I'll play that same piece of music again, and then we'll solo and see what work it's doing. Now this one is interesting. It seems to be affecting primarily the, what I would call, twinkly guitar. For point of reference, I'll find what I'm calling the twinkly guitar and solo it for you. Let's move down here on the track list, and it looks like the actual track name is Super Fast Clean Thing, which is a pretty adequate portrayal. I'll solo that and play the same piece again. And if I play that same thing without the EQ engaged, let's see how it sounds. To my ear, that EQ cut is removing a little bit of the harshness in that. Let's hear it in context, and I'll disengage and re-engage the plug-in to see if you can hear the difference. Now, to my ear, that makes a tremendous difference, and it's nice to be able to use the solo function to specifically target problem frequencies. During that last demonstration, I disengaged and re-enabled that specific node by double-clicking. Let's take a look at some of the work that I'm doing on the overheads. I'll move a little bit further into the song. There's a pre-chorus right before the final chorus, and in this piece, I was, if I recall, smashing the living daylights out of the hats. Probably a bit harder than I needed to. It did become a little bit annoying in the higher frequencies. Let's take a listen to it in context. Now if I go back to my overheads channel and pull up re-EQ here, you can see that I've got a pretty significant dip. I'll make this a bit larger so we can see. And that cut is right around 4K. Now in this case, since my cut is specifically on the overheads and not on the master, I'll need to solo the drums so you can clearly hear the difference. I'll solo my cymbals bus and play back that same section and disable and re-enable the filter. Now there's a definite difference that can be heard there, but the ability to solo the frequency helped me to better pinpoint the frequency. I'll play that back in context and toggle the filter again.
As you can hopefully see and hear, ReEQ is a powerful addition to your arsenal of plugins in Reaper. I definitely encourage you to check out the link in the forum for more information and add this to your installation. What are some of your favorite EQ plugins and why? I like this one because not only does it sound good, it also seems to optimize my workflow and help me to get through a mix a bit quicker and more efficiently. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee, or Super Thanks links below. There are also links in the description for equipment that I use, and any purchases that you make from those links help to support the channel. Membership is also available for the channel, and I'd love to hear your ideas for member-exclusive content. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. hot in that suit.